Hi, and welcome back to THU TV. My name is Chris Nichols, and uh, we're here uh, ready to go for another great round of interviews. Um, hopefully, you guys have been enjoying these broadcasts, so please let us know what you guys think. We'd love to hear your feedback. I'm here with Daniel and Ford, right? And uh, we're going to talk about this awesome thing that we do every year at THU, which is called the Golden Ticket, which reminds me, of course, of um, the movie Willy Wonka, Willy Wonka yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, you guys were the sponsor of the Golden Ticket, right, over at That's our right. station. Yeah. So, so tell us a little bit about the Golden Ticket. Yeah, what? sure. So we've been running um, the Art Station Challenges for about 18 months. Right. Uh, so I think about six months into it, we, we ran the first um, Golden Ticket Challenge for, okay. for THU. So uh, basically it was um, based around the theme, uh, one theme, and everyone registered, uh, competed, and the main prize was actually a trip to Troya. Right. It was the last ticket, you know, for the event. So I think there was also, like, workstation prizes and all sorts of things. So okay. it was a pretty, pretty exciting thing. Right. Uh, this year, uh, we ran it. We had, I think, around 900 entries. 900 entries. Uh, yeah, and really amazing artists. So not, you know, not just entry level, but all the way up to professional right. artists as well. Uh, so yeah, Ford, um, you know, won the the Golden Ticket Challenge um, against 900 other artists, and <laughs> uh, and he's taken his rightful place at, at, in Troya. Right. Yeah. Well, I think that's really awesome. So, Ford, welcome uh, to Troy. Is it, this is your first THU? Yeah, this is yeah. my first THU. Which is, uh, which is really cool. Um, I'd love to know a little bit about what you decided to do and about the art pieces you made for, for, for the competition and how it got here. So tell me a little bit about what inspired you to do that. Okay. So, basically, this year's theme is about clan. About so, the clan. Yes. And they, in the description, there are saying try to uh, do a piece like to show your cultural background, to show your identity, how your art, like what is the background like of your art, like right. how you, how you be, become the artist who you are. Right. So I was born in China mm -hmm. and I then went to US, so blah, blah, blah. Right. But I think my roots still like deep into like the, Eastern culture, like the Chi especially Chinese culture, like the, all the myths, all the dynasties, like a long, long time histories and stuff like that. Right. So once I saw that, I was super intriguing to it. And then I was thinking, huh, what could be clan? Like clan is, is, is so easily to emerge into Chinese culture. Okay. Thing. So I come up, I was doing some research and personally I really love music. Yeah. And especially traditional music and okay. classical music. And I found this um, amazing um, drum band in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. And they're putting Zen and drum together, performance. And I was in shock. It was like, I think it's a perfect way that express like Chinese culture okay. in a sense. So I just add my own twist into it. And I design all the characters, and I create a clan of drummers. Those are tiny, but they're, I try to make them cute and interact with each other, and put THU unicorn like <laughs> symbolism into it. Right. And that's how I make the piece. But it's a it's a very elaborate piece. It's one of those wonderful pieces where you can just look at everything, and there's always something going yeah. on. And uh, uh, you know, I when I was a kid, uh, I remember my mother took me to the museum. And uh, I fell in love with Bruegel paintings because there's so mm. much stuff going on and all yeah. those little mm. things. But I love the thing, and it's very, definitely very, very traditional in a lot of ways of, of what you're talking about Eastern culture. Obviously, you know more than, than I do. Um, but uh, can you tell us a little bit about what was it? Was it done as a, as a 2D drawing? Was it done as a 3D mm, it drawing? It was or? done completely in 3D. Okay. I, I don't have any paint overs, which is interesting. Right. Um, because Personally, I'm a TA. I'm okay. a technical artist. Right. So I wrote code for a living. Uh -huh. uh, I don't do art for a living. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, coming from tech background, I'm really into technology. Mm -hmm. And I always think uh, technology is not against art. No, that's good to hear. And that's something exactly. That, yeah, no, I think there's a lot of people somehow who rebel against technology because they don't understand it. And I think you're right. You say they think it's against it, but people yeah. use it all the time. Yeah, you know? it's they, always been there. Yeah, like if that, you look at art history, it's every great artist 
they are also technologists. Like yes. they inno innovate, right. they innovate the new technology, new paint, new way of doing something. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I was yeah. talking about the the Dutch masters. Or I did a talk today, and I talked yeah. about the Dutch masters. Those those guys were chemists because they mix their own paint yes. in order to make yeah. their paints so That's why vibrant. they make them unique, right? Right. Yeah. So it's great. So tell me a little bit about your being a technical artist. And what um, being a technical artist. Uh, Where you do know, you work, so, by the way? Oh, I work at uh, Industrial Light and Magic. Okay, and great. La That's more, it's, a little, it's a little place. At yeah, X Lab. Yeah, X Lab. <laughs> right. uh, it's, an, uh, it's because uh, at LM, they always look into the future and they yes. have this because AR and VR, everyone knows it's the future. Mm -hmm. And I personally, I think it's literally the first time I see as it's the right media that break the boundaries, that okay. can bring people's vision into another level. Okay. Like we, we were literally breaking the 2D surface. Right. So, so far we, we always see like video games, movies, they're all the same. Right. Like they, they're still proje projected into a flat screen. Right. But once you fully three, 360 full image and full information surrounding you, right. That's a totally different experience. Right. It's exhausting. Like, almost everyone try that, experienced it. They say it's awesome, but once they get out, they feel like the whole world is boring. Right. So, sensory yes. overload. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I yeah. know, I know. I've been, I've, been, I've been looking at a lot of VR stuff and I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. And it's really hard taking off those goggles because you're completely disoriented. You don't know yeah. anything. Like, yeah, it looks a little bit, yeah. it's very, very hard to do it. And, and as, my, as a TA, I was in there, like, play as, um, um, basically, my main job is look dev and real-time rendering. Okay. And in a way, I'm, in a way, I can say I'm writing code for art purpose, mm -hmm. um, I am trying to achieve the film look in VR. Right. So everyone knows it's really hard. Right. And basically, that's that's what I'm trying to aiming for, like to overcome that challenge. Interesting. That we can have that real time, like a film quality in right. real time and 360. Well, I'd love to talk to yeah. you about this some more because this is, I have a feeling we actually you and I are going to have a side conversation later today yeah. because this is some, <laughs> something I'm definitely very interested in. Yes. And I think you're right. That's something that's important. And it serves more than just the film quality. I exactly. think it serves a huge industry in general. Hmm. It's fascinating. I really love what, what you're talking about. Yeah. But I want to get back to Daniel for a second because I want to make sure that people understand the importance and the role that ArtStation has at a place like THU. Uh, so sure. tell us a little bit about Art Station and what role they're playing here because they've been a partner for a very long time, am I correct? I think like a lot of people, uh, we came to THU for the first time having no idea really what it was about. Right. So we were here for a couple of days, sort of immersed ourselves and, you know, drank the, the Kool-Aid, as it were, sort of we were transformed and uh, after that we, we sort of had, you know, extensive conversations with Andre and we really, you know, had had confidence in the fact that he had a vision for you know where this was going, how he was going to um, expand it. Uh, it. It perfectly fit into our strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, we were just a we were a startup at that stage. We're you know in our first year. Right. Really. We've only look been how big you've years. gotten now. Yeah. In it's, three years. It's a roller coaster. We're we're actually getting I think around 3.2 million unique visitors to the site each month now. So wow. It's dizzying. Yeah. We have. Um, double the engineers now that we did, you know, a, a year ago, um, just to keep everything moving and you know keep new features um, happening. But yeah, with with THU, uh, you know, it it was the perfect time for us to partner with an event like this. It's it's the most important event um, for us for the near the year. Um, it just completely it brings together, um, you know, 600 900 artists who we get to talk to. It's almost like a huge focus group. You know, we get to see, you know. Yeah what everybody's doing, what they want, um, you know, if, if we're hitting the spot, you know, what they, they need from a, an art platform. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's perfect for us. It's been great. Uh, so I, I find it fascinating that, that you guys have, uh, you know, so many, had such growth over so many years, but I also think what's fascinating is that what I see on our station is very highly reflective of THU, right? It like is, It's yeah. almost like you guys have been, like, working together to foster this creativity and applaud it and find a good way to 
do it and just get people to excited, right? Yeah. It, yeah. Everyone's excited when they go onto the art station. People are excited when they come to THU. The two missions of, of each organization are really similar. Like, you know, THU is to transform, you know, people and, you know, bring them into this sort of tribe. And with Art Station, you know, our, our goal from the beginning was to um, change artists' lives, you know, to, to put, you know, opportunities in front of them and to help them, you know, get to the next level. So right. it, that's what I'm saying about that sort of, you know, the combined paths, it's just, it's very similar, you know, the directions that we're, we're pushing in. Right, and then with the, the competitions you guys are doing, that also really incentivizes people to do things because that puts their yeah. work in front of new thi- new, a lot of eyes. It exactly. got them excited. They get to win prizes or whatever yeah. it happens to be. But I've actually know, I know of several directors. Actually, I'll tell you specifically, uh, Tim Miller, who is one of the owners of Blur, he specifically goes onto sites like ArtStation mm-hmm. and looks at art one by one by one himself yeah doesn't necessarily use a recruiter's like, I need two lighters or one model or whatever. He's like, nope, he handpicks these guys. Like, let's get in touch with this person. We, yeah, we built ArtStation, you know, as a discovery tool. So right. it's, it's an artist tool for, to promote their work, but it's also a discovery tool for anybody like a recruiter or, you know, even fans to, to sort of um, find that artwork. Um, and with the challenges, we've... Um, you know, we've partnered with big um, studios. We actually did a, a Star Wars challenge last year. Oh, really? Uh, which was a recruitment challenge for ILM. And oh, interesting. It was, it was, yeah, it was the biggest fanboy moment of my life, really, because we had, um, you know, the Art Station um, Star Wars challenge. Uh, Sixteen ILM art directors were judging. Right. They set the brief. Uh, it was a you know a three stage process. There was um, you know a environment or keyframe challenge. There was a vehicle challenge, and then there was a boot camp challenge at the end of it. So right. The boot camp challenge was uh, moving deadlines, moving briefs. Um, you know the the artists had to they had to be on their feet for the entire you know challenge. Uh, and they were trying to simulate a, a you know a work environment, studio work environment, which was really cool. Right. Uh, so, yeah, the the um, feedback that we get from artists on these challenges is that they're doing it for learning. So, right. more than seventy percent of the artists are doing it for learning and um, and feedback, which is really interesting. Well, that's really great. Now, now, Ford, you. You were uh, telling me that obviously you're more of a uh, you're at work. You're a technical artist. Is that correct? Yes. So you so you don't necessarily spend a lot of time modeling and lighting and doing things like Not that. Not really. Right. Yeah. So but you are doing it on your own, am I? Yes. Yeah. So this this stuff. So that's basically what you're doing at home. Is you're basically going to art station. You're getting inspired and you're doing yes. things. Yes. That's, well, that's one thing I really love about art station is you have got to see your favorite artist's work and someone you don't even know their name right. and you saw their work you're just in awe right and as as artists in the soul i just like oh my god i gotta do something right <laughs> yeah that that that's that's what i do like so i'm all my weekend uh, like every night i went home and just start like doing something right. doing some art but by doing art, I mean not only art. I like every piece I do, I was trying to learn something. I was okay. trying to learn like lighting, for example, or new way of shading, right. or new shader, or new rigging, or anything, like okay. any aspect of it. So eventually, eventually by doing and I love to join all these competitions. Right. Even though some For the same them, reasons that they Exactly. Yeah. Like a, as a learning process. Right. Because you have a limitation and you have a goal and you work through that. Right. And then you can just uh, keep accumulating your skills and eventually you basically know everything. Well, eventually. Eventually. Yeah, <laughs> that's the so. yeah, ultimate goal. Yeah, I don't think it's hard. I, that's the thing I like about CG is that there is no end to learning. Yeah, like, I learned it all. No, no it's, <laughs> it's all every day, and the next day is all changed again. Yeah, absolutely. No, they, yeah, this that's really fascinating. I think it's great. Um, what What are some of the favorite things that you've learned by doing these, some of these competitions? Like, what are you things that are the most memorable? It's like, oh, you know, this was a really great one because I learned. Okay, for example, let's take mm-hmm. the THU, um, the THU competition that you did. What did you? What did that process teach you? They teach me. Okay. 
first I uh, go, go more deeper into my own culture. Like yeah. I literally went to the Asian art museums and there's an exhibition there. Mm -hmm. And I literally went there and do re research. Right. I was taking photos of the patterns and somehow in the process I know better about my own culture. Yeah. That's the first thing. And then when I come back and start doing something, and by the time when I join the competition, and I know I don't have enough time to really achieve what I really want to show. So I have to figure out a way that's really clever to make it happen in the time frame I have. Right. So what I did is very tricky. Even though you can see those characters are all different, mm -hmm. I did some like mo I used like the modular system. Mm -hmm. So I basically rig different body types, right, and different expressions. Yeah, and then I use code just to merge them together. Right, and then it worked out perfectly because in this way you save a lot of time, and then you generate like at least twenty characters in one image. So you felt you, you learned about some efficiency tools that you were in there, Yes, right? and a new way, I would say. Like right. It, it's, for me, it's a new way to do multiple characters all at the same time. Yeah, it's because you're a technical artist. You <laughs> want to be more efficient and things to be faster. Yeah, always thinking about efficiency. Yeah, no, it's great. I think efficiency is underrated. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> yes. People want to talk about how ridiculously complex they did instead of going, you know what, I did this really, really simply. Yeah. And then they're like, well, then it was, if you did it simply, then that's bad. It's like, no, sim simplicity sometimes is actually beautiful in a yes. lot of ways. Yes, and so. sometimes it's like, by sort of using technology, you can get so many details in something that really, really fast. Interesting. And that's the other benefit. Yeah, that's great. Well, Daniel, really quick, uh, as we're, we're getting close, but we, I'd like to ask you a few questions about trends. Like you said, you know, obviously ArtStation came about three, year, three years ago. You guys mm. were a startup, right? Yeah. Uh, and now you're one of the, probably one of the biggest sites out there uh, in terms of sharing your art. What are the trends that you've noticed over the three years so far? We, with the challenges, we get a really good indication of, uh, you know, the, where the artists are coming from, what their specializations are, mm -hmm. what their interests are, because we run, um, you know, multiple uh, categories for each challenge. So we have like real-time categories for characters and environments. We have, uh, you know, rendered categories for matte paintings, characters as well, and as well as concept art. So one of the things that we're really seeing is a surge in the game development, the real-time side of things. Interesting. So a lot of um, artists who, you know, previously were 2D artists are now using 3D tools in their workflows and they're actually moving on to um, you know, game, real-time game engines as right. their delivery platform. Uh, so that, that seems to be like a, a big sort of trend that we're seeing now is that the majority of people who are doing the challenges are you know, interested in game, game, uh, game assets. Game assets, but do, yeah. you, do you feel that they're, they're interested in actual games? I think, yeah, obviously. You think they are, or do you they're, think they're actually just using the game platform as a means of, ex of expressing their art? Yeah, I think that's, that's part of it, but I think you know we're looking at a generation of artists who have grown up on games. Right. They've never known a time when there weren't you know computer games, so that's, that's their language now. Right. It's part of their language, so I think that it's it's just a you know extension of them. You know, their art is to um, produce something that they've they've known you know all along, which is probably taking over, you know, what TV was for previous generations. Right. Right. Well, that's cool. Uh, okay. Obviously, we're, we're getting a little bit low on time, but I like to let people know where they can find you. So obviously, you just go to artstation.com and there's tons of stuff. Is, is there upcoming competitions that people should be aware of? We, we have just completed a competition which Ford uh, participated in. Yeah. Uh, which was Beyond Human, so that's just entered judging now. Okay. Uh, and the results will be out on October 2nd. So okay. So go to artstation.com slash contests, uh, you'll see the results. And you can also look at previous challenges that we've done. So you can see the um, community challenges we do, the studio challenges. Um, you know, there's amazing, amazing learning resources. You can see what all the artists have done, you know, their process. So yeah, I'd recommend looking at that. Okay, great. And what about you? Is there any place that people can go to follow some of your work? 
Art Station. Art Station. Okay, yes. well, Art Station is your best place. <laughs> That's great. That's really cool. Well, I'm really glad you guys are able to make it. Uh, this is really wonderful. Um, uh, I'm so glad that you're back at THU. We get to see each other all the time, which was really fun. Really love to see your work, and I'm, I'm glad you're able to to come here and enjoy it. Uh, enjoy Troya. Are you enjoying it so far? Yeah, I enjoy it so much. Yeah. Uh, all these talks are amazing. People are amazing here. Great. Yeah, find the same people. Okay, awesome. Well, thanks so much, guys. Thanks, Thank Chris. you.